Hey everyone, it's Peppermint here, and I am so excited that the original Seven Strangers are back together. The Real World Homecoming New York starts streaming March 4th on Paramount Plus. And today I am chatting with Norm and Heather. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm gonna blow you hey, a kiss. Let me just get this Peppermint. out of the way. Blowing the kiss. Yes, I just have to scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, it. girl, what's in the tongue? Yes. <laughs> it's a bit of the 90s, honey. <laughs> That's the special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Um, I am so excited to be here with each of you. Thank uh, you. I, I just want to say this right off the off the bat. You um you have I think you know this by now because I've watched some of your <laughs> interviews and things that you've done, but you have affected this young trans girl's life 20 years, 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, 30 years ago. And, um, and I'm just so happy to be sitting with each of you today. So I want to talk to you. How you doing and where are you kind of quarantining from, both of you? Oh, Norm, wow, first. that is quite an introduction. Go ahead, Heather. Um, thank you, Norman, and thank you. Um, I'm in New Jersey, uh, and, and I've been in New Jersey from the time we actually been filmed the show in 1992. I've never left New Jersey. So Jersey City, New Jersey, stand up. That's my hometown. And um, it, it's it's been, wow. Like when you really sat there and just said 29 years ago, almost 30 years ago when we did that show, I, I just keep thinking like, who are they talking about? What are they talking about? But it's it's been that long since I met Norman, you know, and this is literally my family. I don't, I don't say friends. This, this is my family. I know his mom. He knew my mom and dad. I know his sisters, like we're family. So, um, and, and just imagine this relationship that we've been able to build and all the places that we've been able to go just because we decided to either make a tape and send it into this company or walk into an audition 30 years later, People are talking about the conversations that we had and the, and the family that we are. It's been it's been crazy. And thank you for the kind words that you said. Just talking about us, it's crazy. Yes, yes. Um, I'm coming to you from my hometown of Ironwood, Michigan, and uh, I've been in Los Angeles for the last many years. Um, and just the COVID just kind of just diced everything up. Um, and luckily, you know, I have a good family to come back to that kind of helps me get back onto my feet, you know? Um, just work just kind of evaporated. When you're a creative person in the industry with the COVID, it was just a nightmare. Um, it was hard to get the unemployment when you're independent, you know? And it's hard to keep up with them rents there. It was just crazy. And with all productions sh shutting down and everything going on, so... Um, you know, I made it back here and it was, it's just been awesome. The family has come in and this reunion is a huge lifesaver for me. Um, and uh, so it's, it's great. You're going to, you know. You mentioned um, going, I mean, the idea of going home to your family, mm -hmm. which a lot of us have done over the past year with the pandemic. Um, what was it like to be back together? All seven of you, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, I know that the, I know there's been a few little reunions here and there and some some ways to keep the family going. But what was it like each of you to, uh, to be back I, with the family? I think in a normal world, when people say, oh, let's get together for a reunion, you pick like this cute little place. Everybody shows up in their best outfit. Everybody's just like <laughs> turned up, got everything together. The fact that they got the same place that we lived in 29 years ago yes this just they went for points immediately and they put us in there it, it's just like I don't think that probably has ever been done before like that was absolutely insane um and then I would say I'm not gonna lie initially I thought like this is gonna be tough 30 minutes in it kicked right back in it, it, it mm -hmm. all kicked right back in again and 
me being married now and whole grown woman, I was like, how is this going to work out? Working, waking up in the morning with these people. I had to share a room with Julie, although that turns into a whole nother episode because we had a third person come into our bed every single night. You'll see that in, in episodes coming up. We started a whole new confessional bed, which got crazy. Um, yeah, so it was, it was unexpected. It was great, but it was definitely unexpected going back into the same house. Yeah, um, you know, for me, this is this series that's coming up is unlike anything. I mean, we've done reunions, yeah. like you've said in the past, but you never get in depth because it's always about like you only get like maybe 30 seconds of like, what are you doing? You're in Michigan, blah blah blah, you're working here and there. No, this is like it really stretches out a lot. And you know what's changed? We've changed culture. And not only did we change culture, but we've changed the people that used to run the network. Like we just were in a meeting and God, it was amazing. I saw faces that would never be in those positions back yes. in 92. Oh, wow. And yes. now, yes. you know, people watch us like you that grew up and now they're in these jobs. And they have taken such great care of us and brought us back. And they were brave enough to say, you know what? The network wasn't great to me. It wasn't easy for me. I was a gay Frankenstein. Like, what do you do when the first guy that comes out, we're going to, you know, talk about this and talk about that and, and then, or not talk about stuff. I mean, like I had Lady Bunny and RuPaul, all these people came to my birthday and it was like, they got erased from people were erased from a lot from, of the From the taping on the, on the I'm original? I'm friends with everybody ah! back then. And it's like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's exactly, but people weren't ready for it. You know what I'm saying? They weren't ready. And so to see how people received us, to see how you received us, to see mm -hmm. how society really changed. It was so heartwarming. It's so heartwarming to see you here, yes. you know, being you yes. in a legitimate job, being respected for the person you are. You are gorgeous and amazing and you deserve this position. And we, I am so glad if I was the welcome mat to get you where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were more than the welcome mat. You were the welcome mat, the doorway, the house, the, the windowsill, the hmm. ledge, the kitchen, the hmm. everything, the bedroom. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, um, wow. did you, did either of you have any hesitations? doing the show i know heather you mentioned once they said the original house that probably would be the selling point for me was no all the, everyone said yes and the original Ms. house Peppa, let me mean? let me gather that fact together they did no. not say the original house no they didn't they did not tell us nothing baby i i figured we would be downtown somewhere because mm -hmm. they have this space downtown you ever been in new yeah. york city those lofts they they can hold all these people and a production team when I pulled up to 565 Broadway, I, I was I get I said, I know y'all lying. Stop I, what? I could not believe it. Like I couldn't believe yeah. the place was available because the last time I had been here, Julie Norman and I did something with Oprah. Yeah. So yes. that was years ago. Yes. And they said that place was already on the market. And so we figured someone had bought it. So that was crazy. But then there's also, just to keep it a hundred with you, like there was also this hesitation about reopening my life back up again, mm -hmm. you know, as a grown woman, not 21 years old, not mm -hmm. giving a F about the world. Like that, that's one mindset that you have at 20, 21 years old. Now that you're grown and there's certain things, I was like, do I really want this? I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to mess up something that we, we did that people kind of have this fond memory of what if something goes crazy? So I was, I was against it at first, mm -hmm. totally against it. Mm -hmm. Did not you me. ever, oh, go ahead. Not me. <laughs> no, not me. I was like, Heather, do it. Click. Heather. Yes. Oh, Norman. Heather. Norman and Julie called, blew up my damn phone so much it was not even funny. It's like, what are you doing? How are we going to do a reunion show and you're not there? I don't understand. Norman is so persuasive, y'all. I don't know. He got that other little gift going on. Were you the last person to say yes? The last. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. The last. Oh, it, was, it, it was crazy. I have a question. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the, to the vault. And I didn't really need to go back to the vault because I, I'm not lying when I tell you I know every single word. It's ter terrible. I know every single word that y'all said the entire time y'all filmed that thing. Anything that aired, I know every word, every breath, every hesitation. Wow. I know every comma, period, and pause. 
And so I want to know, uh, just speed round, did you ever actually hear from Larry Johnson, Heather? Oh, <laughs> you know what? You ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, <laughs> I'm married now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. I uh, guess. Yes. But he. But he, when I wasn't, when I wasn't married, um, I did go. He was very nice to me. Went to a basketball game, and and it was nice. Hung out. Nothing ever happened. Let's just be clear. But he was always very, very nice to me. Um, and then recently, like two years ago, I ran into him in the bank. Uh, and oh wow. Yeah, just r- randomly ran into him in the bank in the city, and he laughed because. <laughs> it all came together. Like, imagine when I was like, oh my gosh, I want to meet Larry Johnson. Y'all hadn't aired yet. We hadn't aired. He was like, what is this? Here's some girl with some braids, whatever. You know, <laughs> it was really nice. So imagine fast forward, you know, I now see him 25 years later at this point. He was like, Heather B. Like, it- <laughs> gave me the biggest hug he was so nice and shout out to larry john like he was it, it's one of them things if you were ever crushing on somebody <laughs> like as a teenager or whatever and you finally get to meet your crush and they are everything you wanted them to be that's oh. who he was i uh want to ask you heather really quickly about i mean i know that the, the happy hour has grown and changed and sort of morphed through the years <laughs> um but uh years ago i think it was years ago in an interview uh, I think probably around the time that you filmed the original season, um, you described people in the music industry not really taking you serious as a result of doing the real world. Mm-hmm. So obviously now we can see, at least from where I sit, we were able to see uh, a woman of status in in the music industry and in and sort of hip hop culture and black culture. Do when did that change? When I changed. <laughs> It changed when I changed. It changed when I decided I don't have to focus on being a recording artist. Just Mm -hmm. focus, honey, on being an artist. Stop Mm. putting yourself in a box. And I think we do that just naturally because you could just keep, you you read too many things or you hear too many things or you watch too many interviews or whatever the case may be. And you just take in all this information and you sometimes put these ceilings on yourself or put these boxes. And I, I was so focused on being a recording artist. I would not allow the artist in me to grow. And the minute, um, I, I recognized the artist in me and, and was not afraid to let the artist in me grow. Baby, the cooking came, the movies, the television, the writing, the everything. And, and God just said, go. Like, I'm so glad you took those anchors off your feet. Go fly. And, and that's, that's what happened. I have to say, as an, an independent recording artist myself, I have, that was probably the first time I'd ever seen someone who was signed with a label. I knew, you know, BDP. I knew like, you know, the, the legends that they are and were, Mm -hmm. um, seeing you even on the series take control and, and make the decision, at least the beginnings of those stages of saying, I'm going to just do this myself. You know, now we're in a completely different world in terms of the the recording industry, the music industry, uh, and entertainment, where artists do have more control and they yes. have access to their fans in a, in a way that you really led that charge. And I, I just want to say thank you for that because wow. I've never seen anyone demonstrate that on MTV on a major platform, a black woman saying, "I'm going to take control over this." It just ha- hadn't happened, and so um, we saw a lot of thank wonderful you. things happen on the show, people taking control of their own destiny. And yes. uh, I have to ask you about this, you know, Norm. Can I call you Norm? Is that okay? You can call me Norm. <laughs> yes. Normal, <laughs> call me Norm. <laughs> Norm, um, <laughs> what impact, if any, did the show? And I think based on, I think we'll get to see some of this, if I'm right, based on the, yeah. the uh, couple of the, the um, uh, previews that we've seen so far, but what impact, if any, did the show, the original season of uh, being on The Real World, have on your love life? I, I honestly have to say it didn't have, it had a really kind of almost devastating impact on my love life, you know, and, and still to this day. Um, it's, you know, it's very hard. Um, 
it was it was a very the first five years was very hard for me you know um a you know the show kind of came out with a label bisexual so the the actual gay community and you know I was one of the first 16 people to start act up you know and all of a sudden those people kind of turned on me because they're like you're not strong enough I'm like I didn't have I didn't say that I didn't do these things like the, the control was out of my hands and so you know a lot of you know, a lot of like gay people kind of like turned away from me, but yet the public, you know, had started opening up. Like I'd done something that they couldn't even do. And so that was kind of changing. But at the same time, it was so hard because you didn't know who you were dating. Like literally people had this preconceived idea of like, oh, well, you must have a lot of money. You must have this stuff, you know? So when I would get involved, with people, you know, I, I work as an artist. I don't make a lot of money and they think that you have like some BMW somewhere. And, you know, after like six months, you know, they're like, oh, I want to go to Argentina, but I don't have to pay for you all the time. And this and that, I'm like, well, so it's, it's, it's not been super easy. Sometimes you'd find people fell in love with you because of the television show. And I found that more than often for a very, very long time almost to where people didn't recognize me. And it took like about 12, 15 years later, you know? And, but even at that point when they didn't recognize me, um, you know, someone would rat me out. They're like, oh my God, and go to their Christmas party. I've been dating there for like, you know, six months. And they're like, you're dating the guy from the real world, you know? And then they're like, what? And then they'd start looking into it. And about that time, the internet came along. So then all of a sudden people would start cross-checking things. So, I mean, I have to say that, you know, I, I unfortunately, it, it hasn't been as, as, as successful as I'd had hoped it would be, but I'm always kind of hopeful. Um, well, there's one, I guess the only, um, you know, inkling of your relationship and love life that we got to see on the show uh, mm -hmm. was this, what I would call legendary, probably seminal kiss between you and Charles Perez, who right. I later on was a, like watched him on his TV show. Um, did you and Charles, I, I know how that obviously played out on and during the course of taping, yeah. I think, but um, did you ever get a moment ever to sort of reconcile the momentous impact of that televised, that that televised kiss would have whether not only in your personal lives, but just like outside, like in the, the rest of the world with each other. Did you ever it have was a conversation? So, yeah, it was so, it, that was like, so also kind of nutty and hurtful and weird was that like when that show was airing and I was still kind of crushed out on him, he was having a watch party and he, I wasn't even invited to come to his like watch party. What? You know, yeah, I know, right? So that was like, mm. <laughs> so I just kind of like watched that episode by myself as he was like gathering everybody to see himself on camera. And the, ir the irony of it all <clears throat> was, you know, he had changed, his name was something else. He changed his name, but he went on to do a talk show and, yeah. you know, it was part of the, the formation of gay entertainment television. And we went to the nappy floor, you know, with Linda Simpson and everybody and they were like, oh my God, gay television is now here on the floor. Well, Charles Perez had a talk show and they were launching it. And when I showed up, they were horrified because they decided to make him straight. <laughs> yeah. So he reversed and went back into the closet. Good grief. And I just thought like, oh, here he was, someone I met and act up, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I couldn't believe it. Was there any unfinished business between the castmates? I know we'll, that's just a yes or no. I know that we'll have to tune in, but coming back to the house, was there any unfinished, unfinished business? Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, put an O in front of that, yes. Oh, oh my Lord. Okay, one more question. Another question for you. Um, in the original season, you kind of all mentioned kind of roundabout having other places to sleep at one point or another. So how much of your time did you actually spend in the loft originally? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, you know, people know like a lot of the back, from the backstory that how Norm was even introduced to the show because they originally went to his loft to look for, to film the show. 
Which so was a Norm, different loft, right? It was a, an yes. entirely different loft in Brooklyn. It's so bigger. Norman was chilling before he even did this show. Let's be clear. He had this big, beautiful Roller skating rink in the, in the floor, in, girl. Yes, like wow. in, in oh, Brooklyn. Yes. Laid out. Okay, so let's be clear. Um, and so my place was in Jersey City. We were all very, very close. So I would say probably once or twice a week, I went back home. Okay. Same with you. What and Norm? Did you same? Is that the same across the board? You? No, I like I anchored in. You know, I tried to like figure out how to uh, get everybody back into the loft. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know the team behind the show was pretty young. They really wanted this show to work, and they needed the show to work if we were there. And right. um, and Heather brought up interview this this wonderful person, Danielle Feraldo, who doesn't get as lot of credit, but she really was trying to get us to be the glue to get us yes. all into a place to make a TV show. We don't know what the hell was going on, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I, I try to stay with Julie as much as possible. Um, and, uh, you know. Yeah. Like Miss Pepper, imagine somebody saying, we're going to shoot this documentary with you, girl. And you just be yourself. You go about your business. You, you, you're you going to stay with these people. Just go. And then literally two and a half months, three months later, boom. Like, that's what happened to us. Yeah. Like, yeah, we all were established in our perspective fields. We all had jobs. We all knew what we wanted to do. And I think that's what was very unique about this first season. We all came in from the arts because they wanted seven people from the ages of 19 and 25 involved in the arts in some way. So we had a direction we were all going in. But when you take that and you put that into... A machine like it what like MTV was at the time, mixed in with music videos and the 90s and all. It even, I think at some point, midway through those first 13 episodes, it went out of their control. Like they had no control of like who was watching, who was secretly watching, because a lot of people were at secretly. an age. Secretly. Absolutely. Because I don't think initially it was the cool thing to watch. Like mm. it was like, what what is this? And they got this black girl and the, and the angry black man and the gay guy, these labels started coming mm -hmm. and it was like, you watch that? And oh, I don't watch that. Two weeks they later. They were watching it. They, <laughs> yeah. Two weeks later, they were watching and then over the years, this, so, this marathon TV that MTV yeah. created, yeah. you know, watch the marathon, binge watch. Marathon, marathon. honey, marathon, yeah. then stay and stick around yeah. for the Road Rules Challenge. And then see the reunion. <laughs> yes. And then yes. 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 <laughs> not just created reality television mtv created how we watch television now that marathon became a word and now you don't even want to watch a series unless you can watch all nine episodes in one weekend it's like don't drag me out week to week honey i ain't doing this with you so it it went out of their control even so it was we had to escape a little bit you know like right. if you could got, go find a place to hide in your little you know one bedroom I went there. Unlike last time, you could not escape to your loft in Brooklyn or to your place in Jersey or anywhere else or or even uh, Andre's place in Jersey. You had to stay in the loft this whole time. So what was it like? Was it tense? Was it exciting? Are we get should we should I get my popcorn? Ooh, oh, I do? Cool. Get your popcorn and your bubbles. It is yes. not like they're not ready. I'm telling you. Y'all ain't ready because here's the thing you have to imagine. So we were only there for a shorter amount of time than the original 13 weeks that we say to do the first season. Mm -hmm. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. So baby, guess mm -hmm. what? Once you walk at that door, That's ain't it. no coming back. Get your sham wow because it's going to be like, get your <laughs> sham wow, girl. Ain't no, ain't no coming back. Uh -huh. Lots of tears, lots Ryan. of conversation. I mean, it's did, you all... have, did you have the same bedrooms? Did you did you ask? I was Goldilocks. I was Goldilocks. I was <laughs> and had to visit all of my roommates because they love. And me. some Here of I us am, are, you're in my bedroom. So Everyone some of us are married now. And so originally in the first um in the first season of it, Andre and I, I shared a room with a guy. And now obviously I couldn't do that. And hey, that would have been a whole nother show. Me, black woman, <laughs> sleeping in a room with a white guy. It, it would, that's they, a whole nother. They never showed up, not one, there is not one, from what I can tell, not one image of you and Andre 
in that in that bedroom. Get into that. They were like, let's not show that. We're not showing that. Get into that. But that's what Norman is saying. Like, imagine yes. that. And we slept 13 weeks. We had the same role. Yeah, Black woman, white male, stay saying the same role. They never showed it. Never. Not once. So, I forgot that y'all were roommates except for the first episode when you said I'll room yep. with Norman. With, I, with I, Andre. I'm with I mean, Andre. Never showed it. So this time around, because I because I called his house one day, I was like, Andre, this is the black girl that you slept with. I left a message <laughs> a couple of weeks ago on his phone. And his he played it for his wife. And they were cracking up. So this, this time around, I didn't want to get his wife. And so me and Julie, um, she's married now. We shared a room this time. And uh, we made our, one, our extra bed in our room, a confessional bed. And we have visitors. People, instead of that confessional room that they now set up in real world, we made a confessional bed and set up a bar on the bed. Yeah, and no, I guess it was the patron. Guess who's the star of that 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 Three's Company episode? <laughs> you set Jack up Zipper. a bar, honey. You set the oh, bar so high yes. for reality TV and for... Thank you. Do y'all watch reality TV at all now? We watch oh. RuPaul's show. We do. Um, I, I became a huge fan of RuPaul Drag Race. Um, I'm also just a huge fan of Storage Wars. Don't ask me why. I just <laughs> leave this shit in storage and never coming to get it. <laughs> and, and then have people bid on it and find out what you leave in your box. But it's just like this whole true saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And mm -hmm. it's so surprised what people just throw away and don't care. So I got, but that RuPaul's Drag Race and any of the um, cooking shows I watch. Nice. Okay. Listen, you, I, I think the impact that you have had on reality, because you were the first, the, the impact that you had on not only MTV, but the, the, the MTV generation, reality TV, which has changed the entire in entertainment industry, uh, independent music, uh, you know, the world of hip hop, queer rights, gay rights, trans rights, uh, mm -hmm. the visibility piece of all of these different people coming on. You you have a solidified, a, you have a, a spot on the mantle forever. And it is, uh, I, I can't even express how much you, you uh, have um, really influenced the course of history, and I and I and I don't want to try to convince you of any of that, uh, but I just want to say thank you because our world and the 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 right left of it all, uh, those of us who are on the left, uh, those of us who felt like we weren't seen, those of us who felt like we were watching the news tell us every day this government is making a law against you. This these people are afraid of you and want to outlaw you and make sure that you don't have access to this and that. Those of us that were feeling that for the past 30 years were able to hold on to a lot of the things that the two of you and your other five roommates said and did in that house as hope and an example. And, and so I just want to say I'm on behalf of every 42 year old who was, was watching every single every single moment with bated breath, uh, waiting to get home. And then I wanna say thank you for you. Thank you for the season, next season after you because you opened doors for season two. And then, then MTV giving us the gift of uh, the legacy of Pedro Zamora. That all came through you and your efforts and willingness to be on camera. And I thought back to the real world when I went and did RuPaul's Drag Race. So yes. thank you on behalf of all of those people. You are wow. amazing. I want to say thank, thank you. you very much to Heather and to Norm and to the rest of the cast, the original seven of the real world. Uh, the, gosh, real world homecoming. New York begins streaming on Paramount Plus on March 4th. Everyone, please, please, please check it out.